you can write in the chat name uh, whether you're a member and ambassador of Alaska Big Two and also where you are calling us from. Those who are raising their hands, welcome. Uh, kindly write in the comment section um, in the chat room where you are from so that we can welcome you as well when you know each other. Oh, Bray Seliman, welcome all the way from Malawi. We appreciate you. I'm going to pray um, on my uh, own indigenous language, which is Shona. After that, then you can proceed to the country spokespersons, um, giving us updates. Um, well, on what transpiring on their respective countries. I think you will appreciate it with you. Uh, let us pray. Yes, we are also live on Facebook, um, on our Love Black People main page, and also uh, we do have around 70k members who are following us. Make sure that you follow us in all our social media platforms also to get uh, notifications and also updates. Welcome, uh, Brother Joseph uh, Christopher. We appreciate you joining this call. Thank you. So without uh, wasting any time, um, we, we are going to have uh, Brother Patrick um, Tabwa to give us a report on, uh, on what um, is transpiring in South Africa. Yes, sir. But, but uh, Patrick, you can unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Firstly, I want to apologize for the view of the camera. I have a problem with my camera here. It's all right. You can go ahead and present uh, the country report. Say. Oh, thank you very much. First of all, I want to greet everyone who is available. Um, uh, my my regards to the uh, to the founder and the co-founder. Mr. Sinclair Skinner and uh, Mr. Christopher Mapondera. I want to greet uh, the ambassadors, the moderators, and each and every member uh, who is available today worldwide. And I want to be, I, I am so grateful that uh, um, uh, for the work that each and every member puts, working tirelessly in diverse ways for the success of this family. Um, your great work is is noticeable and uh, we appreciate whatever you do. And I, want to, I also want to encourage each and everyone to take part, to hold hands so that we can achieve all these goals together. Um, in last week, uh, last week's meeting, we had uh, the country's group uh, representative who were available and uh, our beloved co-founder gave his speech. We had a successful healthcare and pan-African classes taught uh, by Nana Akua and uh, Tyron Wright. We were then encouraged to invite our families and uh, friends and colleagues to join the I Love Black People family. We were also reminded to download the app, um, and uh, uh, which, which works towards identifying and uh, recommend, recommending um, all the Black-owned businesses and Black-friendly businesses. Links were shared for easy download and uh, um, and also uh, for easy download and uh, both on iOS and uh, on uh, Android users. Uh, looking at uh, the updates on, on coronavirus here in South Africa, uh, from the start of the, 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 uh, the pandemic to now, until now, the South Africa has recorded uh, a positive cases of 3,999,700 and uh, 999,751. Uh, that is the positive uh, cases that uh, uh, South Africa has recorded so far. But from, the, from that, that, that figure, uh, 3,890,509 uh, 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 recovered, managed to recover from the disease. And then uh, unfortunately, we, we lost 101,000 people from, uh, from the disease. So um, actually at the moment, the, 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 the active cases are 7,324, but uh, also South Africa has managed to, um, to conduct a test of about, about uh, 25 million people that uh, have already tested. Uh, according to the, to the statistics, the, um, the recovery rate in South Africa at the moment is 97.3. 
So I would like to encourage each and everyone to have this empathy towards each, each and every black soul that is out there. Because if we don't do it, then nobody's gonna do it for us. We need to stand up and make sure that we, we, are, we, we hold hands and defeat this kind of xenophobic attacks and uh, uh, racism. I will never have peace in my heart until I see that uh, something is done and something is, 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 is being done all, all over the world about uh, these problems that we're facing. I want to greet you all again. This is Patrick Matagwa from Cape Town, South Africa. All right, thank you so much, uh, Brother Patrick Matagwa, all the way from Cape Town in South Africa for presenting a, a report on behalf of people of South Africa. Thank you so much, we really appreciate you and keep on doing the good work using our app to uh, recommend or share safe places for black people all over South Africa and share it to your friends all over the world so that uh, we can have uh, safe places on our online digital guide, which is alafblackpeople.com. To those who have downloaded the application yet, uh, kindly check um, either your inboxes or your WhatsApp groups. Links have been shared on daily basis. Without wasting much of uh, your time, we're going also to have our brother all the way from Liberia. His name uh, is Amara M. Sherif. Uh, he's also our ambassador. Welcome, brother uh, Amara, to our Pan African History course. And uh, are you ready to go ahead and present the report on behalf of people of Liberia? Thank you very much. Um, and thank you for the pleasure and the honor on this platform. Are you getting me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. We can go ahead, brother. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I love Black people, Liberia country. Let me extend my warm, heartfelt revolutionary greetings to the diligent co founders, founders, moderating in diverse way from the success of our noble family. Work never be in vain. As Samara Mauritius Marshall said, unity and victory are so in love by people community. Last week, uh, uh, meeting, we had available representatives, then gave his speech. Then we had a successful health and pan African class from Nanan. Yes, uh, brother. Right, respectfully. Then the class was Clamas. We were in. Yes, sir, brother Amara uh, Sharif, uh, we are facing some uh, network hiccups. We had the link was provided for. Okay, that... you getting me now? Yes, now we can get you. I get you. Thank you very much. So, uh, sir, we were in download the I Love Black People app to identify recommended black and black friendly businesses. The link was provided for easy download both by both iOS and Android users. The month of July is a historical month for the people of Liberia. It was on July 26, 1847, that Liberia gained independence as the, on the continent of Africa. So I prepare independence to the Republic of Liberia. In Liberia, the COVID-19 was drastically, was, is drastically reducing at least one dose, 2,645,947 individuals had their first dose, which constitutes 52.3%. Fully vaccinated individuals is 2,328,125 persons, which constitute 46.0%. So in that view, let's, keep, let's continue to adhere to the health protocol to save ourselves and family. And I personally want to encourage every one of us to continue inviting our friends to join the I Love Black People community 
so that we can fight against xenophobia, racism, because we are black people, we are very important on the continent of Africa and the world at large. And because to be black, I mean, to be human is to be black. So the struggle continues on victory is setting. Report from Amara M. Sharif. I love black people. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I was on mute. Thank you so much, our brother Amara. We really appreciate you. Um, well, next, we're all going to hear our brother Clyde Fuller. He's also an our ambassador all the way from Guyana. His brother, Ambassador um, Clyde Fuller, you can introduce yourself and present on behalf of people of Guyana. Pleasant good morning. Pleasant good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, we can hear you. You can go ahead and present the report, uh, our brother Clyde. Thank you. Um, with all protocols being observed, I'd like to say thank you once again for having me. Um, um, in re my region here in Guyana, we are um, a small country in terms of population. I would like to start with our COVID. Um, numbers so far has been reduced for the up to date. Um, we have only heard about six deaths um, from for this year. Um, so we have in um, having a success over the COVID so far. Um, however, in terms of our nation, we are now a oiled, newly oiled, uh, rich country, but with all the problems that comes with oil, such as um, government spending and stuff, we have been um, having some negative um, headlines intrudes the media with some investigations and so forth with corruption. Um, we have coming up in August our emancipation celebration. So we're preparing, we're highly anticipating that and preparing for that. Um, our Pan-African movement here in Guyana has been under siege. We have been in battled with the government um, for a portion of land that we would have acquired. Um, the government is currently destroying our lands by running pipelines through the uh, monuments. We have some monuments there and some other artifacts that have been um, erected. And the government has been uh, um, through the various ministry has been um, hard to preserve. Um, when it comes to the app, I am learning. I'm encouraging much persons to get involved in the uh, in the I Love Black People movement. Um, the I was able to add a few um, businesses. However, I've not been I've not been successful with getting the health sectors involved because our ex, uh, um, the location of the various hospitals and stuff has been in cross mixing on my my app. But I'm trying to get that sorted out. Um, but as it relates to the app, I love blackpeople.com has been tremendously received by the communities here. Persons are engaged, they, they want to know more about it. And I'm thankful for the courses that we've been doing. And um, persons are learning uh, more so about the health and the history of Pan African. Um, is I'm here in, in Guyana and from the international, from the classes that we are learning. It has been, um, you know, such an inspiration. So I want to say thanks for um, all that I have, what people have been doing to the founder and everyone. I want to say thank you. And on behalf of Guyana, we really, really, really appreciate this program. And, you know, I urge everyone to get involved, get on the bandwagon. The, the fight has been brought to us here as an African. So we know what the struggle is. So I want to say thank you. I am because we are. Thank you very much. I am because we are. Thank you so much, our brother Clyde Fuller, for presenting people, uh, representing people of Guyana 
on behalf of them. We really appreciate you and also the good work which you are doing, uh, recommending safe places. Uh, we, we are seeing those places on our application and also check out also and also make sure that you share a lovebigpod.com to each and everyone so that they can have a um, chance to listen to our Love Black People radio show. It will be also on our website, which is our online digital guide. Which is going, which is the tool which we are using to help us protect each other from racism and xenophobia. Greatly appreciated, bro. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. On next, we're going to have our brother all the way from Tanzania. Uh, his name is um, Brother um, Edwin Chamba. He's also our ambassador. And um, yes, Brother Edwin, can you hear me? So he's uh, also the country spokesperson of uh, Tanzania. Yes, Brother Edwin. Can you unmute yourself? Yes, sir, brother Edwin. Can you hear me? I think brother Edwin is uh, facing some network challenges. I was still waiting for him um, to settle. I just received a notification from our sister, Anna Stella. Um, she's uh, from uh, Kenya, but currently she's uh, in Japan. So she's hello, in the hello. North All right, thank you so much, uh, Brother Edina. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. We can go ahead and present the report on, people, uh, on behalf of people of Tanzania. OK, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Elin Chamba. I'm an ambassador from Tanzania. In this week, I managed to download the iLabda people Net app and make sure that it is updated, recommending backgrounds and friendly businesses on it. That's all I did to make sure that we are here and protecting black people against racism and fear. Yes, group activities. In this week included downloading the app and recommending black owning black friendly businesses. Another thing was to follow I have black people in social media, all social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and so on, so that we link up, share, and recommend and make some comments on those social medias. Another thing was to make sure that we join I Love Black People Radio Show on Syria Radio, Channel 141. Another thing was to make sure that we recommend Black on Black community businesses on behalf of all Black to make sure that all Black people around the world are safe around the world. Black Okay, only COVID 19 in our country, in Tanzania, now we have new cases about 1,334. That makes a total of 37,510 cases, and there remained 841. I encourage everyone to join this movement because I do think this movement is a good movement. That bring together all Afghans so that we can fight together in making sure that Africans are free from racism and xenophobia. Thank you so much for listening. Greetings to everyone. Thank you so much. I am because. Thank you so much. I am because we are. We really appreciate you, Brother Edwin, all the way from Tanzania for presenting on behalf of people of Tanzania. We are, I will appreciate you. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador. Uh, continue using the application and also make sure that all the places which are around you are being recommended. Make sure that uh, you only recommend places which you are sure of that they are, treat black people with dignity and respect. That's all we need. Um, yes, sir. Thank you so much, Brother Edwin. Um, on Thanks. next, we're going to have um, our brother uh, who's going to present our report on behalf of our sister Anna Karina. She's caught up in trans uh, in traffic. Uh, she's uh, 
she's in um in japan so our brother minga robson is going to present on behalf of her so brother minga robson yeah you can unmute yourself can you hear me so brother minga robson is also our yes, I yeah, see, you can go ahead and present the report and also you can introduce yourself. Thank you so much, Brother Awada. I'm going to present on behalf of uh, Anna Stella. I love Black People Kenya Weekly Report, July 16th, 2022. Kenya are suffering due to uh, economy crisis. Our politicians are uh, taking these as, uh, as their advantages and use the, the situation in a campaign leaving their subjects in anger. I, I know Kenya, Kenya is divided because of politics, but we must remember we are all one as we are uh, approaching our election on August. I urge all members, to, uh, all members and ambassadors in this forum who are uh, from Kenya to, to spread, to spread a message of uh, peace, to avoid any uh, loss of blood due to politics. Members were motivated and reminded uh, on how powerful uh, African, Africans was using the example of uh, Mansa Musa. Our, our regular Tuesday newsletter, which highlights on education, health, legal, finance, transportation, beauty, food and accommodation, and other black owned and black friendly content were, was enjoyed. Members were encouraged to submit their contribution, contributions on Thursday for review and the publishing of the newsletter. I love black people. Members were encouraged to follow, like, retweet, and comment on various social media platforms of our group. Our co founder, Sinclair Skinner, is live on a series, series in, uh, channel 141 and uh, were also uh, and are also on Facebook Live with uh, interesting black motivation contents. Our honorable ambassadors and members were encouraged to embark on our on our group activities. To help affect uh, to, to help affect the mission and vision of I love black people, members who went against the group uh, mission uh, or obje uh, objectives and goals were penalized and informed to stick to to the group mission objectives and goals only if they want to enjoy their membership. I love black people members, old old and uh, new. Were, were once were once against uh, again encouraged to stick to the I love black people mission and contribute uh, to the fight against racism and xenophobic attacks. In our country group, members who were unable to attend the Zoom conference call sessions on last Saturday were encouraged to do so this this time and further recommend other, others by sharing the link uh, to these Saturday's meetings. COVID-19 updates. Accumula uh, accumulative confirmed cases, 337,000. Death, 5,668. Submitted by uh, Anna Stella, African, the African diaspora. Read by Minga Rubson Mogaka from Kenya. One love. I love black people. I am because we are Ubuntu. And I also like to encourage all members and ambassadors to remember to download our application and make sure you are sharing with friends and also uh, through all your social media platform. Thank you. Thank you. I am because we are. Thank you. I am because we are. Uh, thank you so much. We really appreciate you. Uh, before you go, uh, you, uh, can you also uh, present a report on behalf of our sister who is uh, in Mozambique? Uh, she's facing some network uh, glitches as well. Her name is um, Anna Karina. She's also an ambassador. So, Brother Mingson, uh, you can go ahead and present also the report for 
our sister in Mozambique. Yes, you can unmute yourself. Yes, sir, brother Robson, you are on mute. All right, uh, brother, brother Robson, you are on mute. Uh, let's, uh, let's hear for brother Antonio Domingos to, uh, to present the report on behalf of our sister. Yes, sir, brother I'm, Antonio. I'm in. I'm in. All right, uh, you can go ahead. Yeah, I think you're facing some network uh, glitches. Uh, brother Antonio Domingos, can you hear me? You can unmute yourself. Yes, brother Robson. Can you can you hear me now? Okay, I can hear you clearly. Yeah. Are you yeah, getting now? Me? Yeah, now we can go ahead. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay. Okay, thank you. I love black people. Greetings to the co to the founder, co-founder moderators, speakers, ambassadors, and members worldwide working with uh, a lot of effort uh, and dedication in device, uh, in device ways for the success of the I Love Black People family. Uh, may the work that I'm has been, work. may the work that has been uh, done go further and reach all the black people around the world activities within the week to begin with in in last week's meeting we had a community group report from representatives our fellow ambassador and from uh, zimbabwe moderate uh, moderator moderate the meeting our co-founder and uh, made uh, our co-founder and made his welcoming remarks. Then we had our, we had reports from country speakers. After the country's report, our health Pan Africa, uh, uh, our health and Pan African class uh, counting with the valuable knowledge from uh, our well-known uh, resident lecturer Nana Akua Zenzele, herbalist and traditional healer and Dr. Tyrene Wright, the Pan-African history. In addition, we were encouraged to invite our family and friends to join I Love Black People family. We were reminded to download the Black, uh, I Love Black People app to identify and recommend Black-owned and Black-friendly businesses. Links were, share, were provided for easy download by, for, uh, by both iOS and Android users. In addition, our moderators, our moderator really kept our, uh, our country groups invi uh, invites throughout the week. Our, on, uh, on our radio show, start, uh, starring uh, Sinclair Skinner, we had uh, a guest run uh, Wattons, an artist, marketer, and engineer. And last but not least, it was inf uh, informed that anyone who wants to participate in the country spokesman should kindly reach out, uh, reach out after today's meeting. Updates to protect black people from racism and xenophobia. Our country is, is in a state of alert against xenophobic attacks against Mozambians immigrants. 
According to, to some human rights experts, and uh, the xenophobic mobilization in the border and uh, deeper, it was uh, registered. It was registered. Uh, it was registered uh, as escalating violence, targeting foreign nations, refugees, as, uh, asylums, uh, asylum speakers, and citizens uh, perceived an outsider, uh, outsiders. This head speech has, be, has become a central campaign strategy for our, politi uh, our political parties. This is uh, a case to, uh, to say that uh, the violence be, uh, because become in institutionalized war crisis in Ukraine. The Mozambian country abstained from the UN resolution that considered Russia, that condemned Russia from the war in Ukraine. COVID-19 updates, uh, cumulative cases. Mo Mozambique has recommended a total of 8,218,295 cases since the uh, emergence of the COVID-19. It has been tested, so it has tested so far 1,359,000 and 94 cases, 1,130,122 1, were negative, and 228,972 were positive. The number of uh, recoveries, the number of recoveries were are uh, 226,319, and the deaths recorded so far are 2,215 South National Institute of Health. Mozambique re re uh, reg registering an uh, increase. Mozambique is registering an increase of cases. In this regard, preventive measures have been taken into uh, account. One love report, uh, report submitted by Anna Karina Cabral, uh, read by Minga Robson Mogaka from Kenya. I love black people. I am because we are. I love black people. Mozambique country group reports from 4 16th July 2022. I am because we are. I am because we are. Thank, Thank you. you so much, uh, Brother Minga Robson, uh, for repre representing um, Mozambique and Kenya at the same time. We do appreciate you. Without wasting time, on next week, we are also going to have a country spokesperson. Um, I can see our sister Natalia Faith uh, is on this meeting. Uh, kindly reach out on WhatsApp so that you can represent uh, Namibia uh, next week. We shall have a quick... Uh, um, update for our application from our sister Yvonne Tushime in Rwanda. Yes, uh, Yvonne. Yes, uh, thank you, Award. As uh, my brother Award said, um, Tushime Yvonne in the um, database developer of I Love Black People. And uh, I wanted to share some updates uh, about the I Love Black People Safe Places app. Um, like uh, after receiving uh, feedback from uh, our members that they are receiving notifications from uh, one category, like accommodation. Now the app is updated. You can receive notification from all uh, those eight important uh, categories. So you can update your app in, on Android and iOS. And also we really appreciate uh, your feedback that you continue to give us that we can improve uh, our app. Yes, let's continue um, sharing safe places for Black people. And uh, in case there is uh, any problem or any feedback, you can just reach out uh, to me or, or award or any 
or Alex that we can uh, continue to improve our app. So let's update uh, our app on Android and iOS and start receiving notification from uh, different uh, reported categories. Uh, maybe if uh, there are questions uh, they can ask, I can uh, respond to them. I'm still on call, even on Facebook. Yes, um, uh, if they have questions, they, they will send uh, through the chat section and also comment section on Facebook, then you will respond later on. Without wasting uh, our sister's time, Nana Akua, for the healthcare lecture, we can uh, go ahead and proceed with the healthcare lecture. Thank you so much, Yvonne. Yes, sir. Nana, can you hear me? You can unmute yourself. Okay. Good day, everyone. Greetings, greetings, greetings. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. So wonderful to see you, Natalia, Yvonne, Samuel, Minga, uh, Amu, Kwasi. Who else is showing? Okay, I think that's all the cameras that are on. All right, thank you. Oh, Nicholas. All right, wonderful. So, so great to see you all. Thanks for joining us again today. This week, uh, Boutte. All right, thank you. So this week we are discussing, we lost nine people that fast. How nine, it was 49, now it's 40, but okay. I shouldn't look at the numbers. I shouldn't look at the numbers. It doesn't matter who's here is who's here, but <laughs> I always kind of look down at the participants and try to keep, uh, be aware of how many messages are there, even if I don't get to them. But if you'll let me share the screen, I don't know if Yvonne or Ward is doing it today. Let me see if I can share our document. We're gonna talk a little bit about, um, how to handle stresses of our lives. You know, they're normal, they're natural, it happens. Um, yes, you are able to share your screen. Yes, and I think I have it pulled up. Okay, great. Okay, so, so yeah, so we'll talk about, you know, if you've joined us before, we've gone through, and of course our handout starts out with listing some of the um, symptoms of stress, um, some exercises and such in terms of how to handle stress. I will not go over that today. We know that just a basic definition of stress is just a physical or mental tension, right? or something that induces it. It's pressure or strain that tends to distort a body, right? That's Webster's definition. But it's anything that kind of takes us out of alignment, kind of takes us off track, off course, uh, kind of disrupts our day, disrupts our normal uh, feelings, physically, mentally, emotionally, uh, spiritually, right? And we know that stress is natural. There will always be a push and a pull. There will always be some type of tension. There will always be something to kind of get you sort of out of shape. Bent out of shape uh, is one phrase we may use. We know that these are natural. So, and they're, they're common and just as inevitable as change, we know that stress will happen. It will occur. Um, and so we just simply need to be able to recognize when we're feeling stressed, when there is something that's causing some kind of tension or kind of distorting our being in some kind of way, and really be able to quickly go to our toolbox, right? Our virtual toolbox of what to do about it, of how to handle those types of stressors. And it could be just simply that from our work schedules, it could be simply that from our responsibilities um, in our families, it could be from financial strain of making ends meet and 
fulfilling our financial obligations. It could be from some physical strain or stress. We have some sort of disease or uh, disorder or illness that causes stress on our bodies. It could be from some sort of mental health uh, issue that causes some kind of strain or strife in, inside of our minds or inside of our psyche. So we know that there are all sorts of things that uh, will cause stress and impact our lives. So there are many ways in which to add on to that. You know, this handout, uh, if you have it, I think is really helpful. It kind of gives really, really quick and simple tips of how to address stress and what you can do to kind of divert your mind from things that are causing stress. Uh, but in addition to these very simple things, there are many other things. There may be touch therapies like massage. There may be reflexology. There may be breathing exercises that you'll do. There may be um, essential oils that you'll use to relieve stress. You may drink different herbal teas, take certain homeopathic remedies. There are so many ways in which to address stress. So I think today, and, and we'll do a quick breathing exercise because breath is life. Breath is so comforting, so healing. It's just like water. We know that we need water to live, to survive. You can survive longer uh, without food than you can without water. And of course, we know that even though breathing is both voluntary and involuntary, we know that we have to be able to to breathe. Um, so the lungs are important. We have to exercise the lung muscle and we have to make sure that it's not doing what it physically is the, uh, equipped or I guess designed to do that also it is allowing us to relieve any emotional uh, or spiritual uh, or psychological stress. And so breath work is very important in that regard. So let's go down to some of our handouts that we have where we talk about the importance of breath. So benefits of deep breathing exercises, right? So we know that with each inhale, we inhale through the nose. You don't have to, you can inhale through the mouth. But in this diagram, we're gonna talk about breathing, uh, inhaling through the nose, we know that the chest expands, the diaphragm contracts, the belly expands. As we exhale, we're exhaling out the nose, uh, the chest relaxes, the diaphragm relaxes, the belly contracts. And so this is what physically, physiologically is happening, right? But on all other levels, there are many other benefits and other things that are happening when we do deep breathing exercises. So we know that we're detoxifying and releasing toxins, we're releasing tension, we're relaxing the mind, the body, and we're bringing clarity. We know that we're relieving pain. We know that we're strengthening, strengthening our immune system. We're improving the quality of our blood. We're strengthening the lungs. We're improving circular, uh, cellular regeneration. And, and I wanna say circulation, but, but we're increasing and improving our circulation. Uh, and then we're elevating our mood. So when we are, uh, doing deep breathing, we're having a multitude of effects on our mind, body, and spirit. And so it's very important. It's very healing. Um, we know that 70% of our toxins are released simply by breathing properly, right? If you're not breathing properly, toxins do not get released, right? We know that we remove emotional distress. We clear out negative or confused feelings with deep breaths. We improve our blood by deepening um, our breathing, releases carbon dioxide and increases oxygen supply, which improves blood quality. We relieve tension, right? When you are afraid, when you're stressed, when you're nervous, your breathing patterns change. So breathing slowly, purposefully, and deeply helps you to feel more relaxed. And we know that it eases pain. When we breathe in deeply and you hold your breath and then you visualize that pain leaving your body, as you exhale, that pain can dissipate, right? So you help breathe that pain or release that pain out of your body with each exhale. And we know that it elevates mood. Breathing increases pleasure-inducing chemicals in your body, 
right? And so there are different ways in which to breathe, right? So if you count to five and inhale through your nose, right? Allow your belly to expand, right? We don't usually want our bellies to expand, right? But when we're doing these breathing exercises, we do want that, right? And we want it to just fill up, fill up, fill up, fill up. And then we want to hold that count, right? To three. And then we'll allow the body, right? To allow that energy cycle to go through the body. And then we'll exhale. And you want to exhale very slowly and as completely as you inhale. A lot of times when we get to the exhalation process, we do that really quickly and we just sort of push out, you know, the air. But we want to do that fully and completely at a count of five as well, so that we can then envision all of the toxins and negativity leaving our body, right? So let's try that. We've done breathing exercises in the past, right? We've done fire breaths in and out the nose. We've done deep breathing exercises. So let's just do this simple five, three, five count. So we're gonna inhale at a count of five, hold it for three, and then we're going to exhale to a count of five. So it'll look something like this. And so you're inhaling for a count of five, holding it for a count of three, and then exhaling it for a count of five. So let me lead you through that. And I always like to say, ready, set, breathe. Okay, so we're ready, be comfortable, right? We're as upright as possible. Our feet are on the floor, right? We want to create, you know, just as in this picture, right? We want the, the whole torso to be upright. We want our legs to be comfortable. If we're seated on the floor and they're crossed, fine. If we're seated in a chair or a sofa, fine. You know, have them flat on the floor. Um, but let's just prepare our bodies for this. So on breathe, we're going to do a count of five, inhaling, holding for three, and then exhaling for a count of five. Ready, set, breathe, inhale. Hold it. And now exhale slowly. Four, five. And hopefully you pushed out all of that air. And now you're allowing, and you probably feel some sensations, some tingling maybe in your body but you definitely should feel something going on. That is your oxygen flow circulating throughout your body. We are using it, we're directing it, and we are allowing for the body to experience more purposefully the benefits of this breathing, right? So sometimes you may use your inhaling through your mouth. Sometimes you may do it through your nose, either way. But the point here is to utilize our conscious breathing. Know that this will give us many benefits to not only our physical health, but also our mental and our emotional health. So these upcoming handouts will have numerous, numerous, numerous breathing exercises. So we will not go through all of these today, but know that there are many different types, different styles of breathing. Um, there's different exercises to center your, your body, to get prepared for deep breathing exercises, to get prepared for meditation. There are all types of breaths, fire breaths, angel breaths, alternate nostril breathing, connection breaths. So if you have the handout, I really, really encourage you to go through these. If it's one a week that you experiment with and try to do it every day, I think that you'll feel the benefits of that. You'll know that you are taking control of your health and your well-being and any stress that you feel, you'll know which breathing exercises may assist you in releasing and relieving that stress. So breathing, uh, conscious breathing, breath work, this is an excellent way to relieve stress. Okay. So again, there are many, many handouts here. 
about breathing. So next we know that massage therapy, touch therapy, body work, these are different names for the same thing, right? But we know that there are many benefits to touch therapy, specifically massage, that helps one relieve tension. We know that massage, and there are different types of massage. There's shiatsu massage, there's deep tissue massage, there is um, Swedish massage, um, and I'm sure others that I'm just not thinking of. They have hot stone massages. Um, so there are many different ways um, to get the massage therapy done, but by and large, these are the benefits of it. We know that it helps release um, or reduce tension in the muscles or release any um, tightness, knots or soreness in the muscles. We know that it eases muscle pain. We know that it can improve your sleep quality, enhance circulation, relieve stress, improve your joint mobility, reduce your healing of any soft tissue injuries, we know that it stimulates movement of the lymphatic fluids. It boosts immune function and improves mental alertness, right? So if you are able to incorporate this into your self-care and set aside money, or even if you do some self-study in whatever self-massage you're able to do of your hands, of your feet, of your arms, your legs, your shoulders, uh, or even if you uh, do an exchange with someone where you all use different muscle um, relieving techniques or massage techniques on each other, uh, even if it's not professionally. However, if you are able to get regular mas uh, professional massages, you will know the benefits. This handout specifically talks about some of the techniques for the different parts as I just mentioned. So different exercises to uh, massage the neck, the lower back, the feet is listed here in this handout. We know that specifically reflexology is basically a very specialized therapeutic type of foot massage and hand massage that stimulates various reflex zones or points throughout the hands and the feet. We know that manipulating these areas or these reflex points can have benefit to each uh, land, organ, uh, body part throughout the body. So we know that there can be great healing through just the soles of the feet or the palms and the fingers on the hand. There's even uh, auricular or ear type of reflexology that can be used where there are different reflex points or zones on the ears that can be really healing. And we know that also there is acupuncture and other um, ways in which to manipulate these points that are often used so there is uh, something called auricular acupuncture or acudetox. A lot of times there are these, uh, not all of these, but certain points on the ear that are helpful for people who are detoxing from drugs and alcohol, um, relief from certain pain, clearing certain blockages in certain um, organs, especially the uh, paths of elimination that we'll talk about next week. Um, so just know that there are zones and points throughout the body, whether you're talking about the ears, the hands, the feet, or even if we're talking about massage and manipulation of the various limbs or even on the torso, the back, that can br uh, bring a lot of relief uh, when you're managing stress. Um, so we've talked about um, some sort of really simple ways of relieving stress, you know, going for a walk, reading a book, laughing, you know, things of that nature. Then we've talked about massage, we've talked about breathing. And so now what I'd like to just focus on really quickly, and if you've listened to me before, you know that one of my favorite things in the world are crystals. So we know that crystals are uh, mineral formations, right, from the earth, right? So it's just one of the many wonders 
uh, of Mother, Father, God. And these stones, these rocks, these crystals, right? These are names that people have referred to them as. We know that they have a certain energy. So anything that comes from, uh, from the earth. So just as we have um, herbs that are natural from the soil that have healing benefits, we know that there are crystals, these rocks, these gemstones, these formations, these mineral formations, we know that they also have their own energy that can help us with this particular topic and beyond. But I tried to pull out information that was specific to um, relieving stress, anxiety, depression, improving sleep, things of that nature, okay? So I've listed some here and probably not in the best order, uh, but, Eh. So if we're talking about sleep, there are certain crystals that just help induce peaceful sleep. So there's rose quartz, which is a, which is a very common crystal, easily, easily found, um, that will help with that, among other things. Uh, fluorite, there are many different types of fluorite. I use typically rainbow fluorite, uh, but there's green fluorite and blue fluorite. Uh, and then there's green calcite here that's listed that will help one who's having trouble sleeping. And this basically just helps calm you and soothe your energy. Similar to how we talk about sedative herbs that have an effect on the nervous system and just kind of help calm you down. So if we're talking about uh, skull cap or lemon balm or valerian, right? This would be the crystal uh, equivalent, right? Of what will help you to rest and calm and get good sleep. Um, so these are some pictures of crystals or rocks. We know that they come in different shapes. Um, some are what we call in the raw or rough form where they're natural from the ground. Then we have some that are usually tumbled or smoothed out, uh, similar to this picture here of the rhodonite where pretty much it's just sort of a tumbling machine that kind of smooths it out and you're not having the rough edges from when it comes out of the earth. Some people uh, will craft them into certain shapes, like you see here with this heart shape, um, celestite. Uh, this is also really good for sleep as well. Um, really pretty blue uh, stone here that if people put it by their bed or their pillow, the energy from this uh, crystal helps one to sleep and rest and have good, pleasant dreams. Um, but if we're talking specifically about people who are suffering from, say, anxiety, like you're really high strung, you have stressful uh, things going on in your life, um, and you really can't always effectively handle those things. There are a whole set of crystals that specifically help with anxiety. If you have panic attacks, uh, there are crystals that help with that. And I'm just trying to get to that, that list, which I must have put at the end. <laughs> um, Bear with me one second. Okay, so I'm getting closer. So we know that uh, there are many, right? And always with crystals, you're going to just pick which ones sort of resonate with you. If you like the way it looks, if you like the way it feels, if you read and research about it and you like that it does a number of other uh, healing uh, things that you need in addition to what you may, you know, primarily be focused on. But if you're having anxiety or you need help kind of with panic attacks, anxiety attacks, social anxiety, if you don't like going out in public and being around a lot of people and you feel really nervous and a lot of um, anxiousness, these are crystals that will help with that. Amethyst, rose quartz, clear quartz, soda light, uh, kyanite, uh, citrine, jasper, obsidian, tiger's eye, uh, lapidolite, uh, shungite, blue lace agate, moonstone, howlite, fluorite. I think I actually have all of these, right? Uh, and I don't really suffer from anxiety, but all of these will do many other things. Um, 
but all of these are wonderful crystals. Whichever ones you may uh, resonate towards is what you would typically choose. And let me just step back and talk about depression. A lot of times we go through periods of depression, even if it's temporary. So not to the point where you would maybe be determined to be clinically depressed to where it's a constant ongoing thing, but just different things that happen in our lives can cause us to have te uh, temporary you know, occasions um, or bouts of depression, I should say, or you may in fact have ongoing uh, issues with depression. All of these crystals here are also excellent for depression and there is some overlapping. So you'll recognize some repeats, but carnelian, rose quartz, sunstone, smoky quartz, uh, kunzite, citrine, uh, labradorite, amber, tiger's eye, lapidolite, fire opal, pyrite. All of these are great for depression. Lapis lazuli, one of my favorites. But what you basically do is have these crystals in your space, carry them with you, put them in your pocket, wear them in your, uh, uh, carry them in your purse, sit them in your car, in your office, um, any and everywhere, be able to touch them, hold them, meditate with them, pray with them, you know, bring in any positive affirmations and self-talk while using the natural God-given powers and um, characteristics of these crystals. They can be really, really helpful. Uh, and so more information here. And then of course, we've talked about flower remedies. Um, what I really like to say about flower remedies is just like there are herbs that may help lower your blood pressure or regulate your blood sugar or relieve your pain. There are flower essences, the flowering parts of different trees and shrubs that help balance your emotions, right? So if there is uh, despondency, if there's resentment, if there is mental fatigue, um, if there is um, loneliness, despair, grief, um, any emotion that is sort of out of balance that you're having too much of and that you can't kind of bring in and balance out. There are a number of flower remedies that assist. The ones listed here are what they call English flower essences. There are 38 of them. There are also Australian flower essences. There are about 42 of those. And basically you read through to see at its worst. So it'll look like it's really negative gets it right but at its worst at its height you know at the you know extreme occasion of a particular emotional crisis you look for that characteristic and the remedy that is that's it's being described is that remedy that will help kind of bring that back down and into balance right so if you are feeling really apprehensive and you dread just any and everything. You don't really know why you have unexplainable anxiety, right? Uh, anxiety for no reason, right? That might be a an occasion where you would use the flower remedy aspen. Uh, if you're really resentful and you can't kind of get over uh, someone who wronged you or some bad occurrence, an accident or an illness, and you're holding on to resentment, um, there is one called willow and it's at the end. So I'm trying to scroll through to get to that one, then willow might be the remedy that you need. So for all of these things, even if we look at them as you know something that's shameful, we don't wanna admit that we're feeling this way, these remedies will help bring you back into balance, right? So if you're bitter, resentful, life is not fair, poor me, willow might be the remedy for you. So these flower remedies can really change your life in terms of affecting how you feel, how you feel emotionally, right? And those are things that we sometimes have to evaluate for ourselves and give an honest answer. I always say the most often asked question or most frequently asked question is, how are you? And most times we lie. We don't really say how we really feel. It's important that you as a person really evaluate how you're doing, how you feel, and then know what to do about it and know that you need to make movement with it and do something about it. So just as the flower essences, we again, we know that there are herbs that have uh, nervine um, and sedative effects that will help with stress and anxiety as well, right? And so again, if you do not have the handout, you can always 
email me. I'll send you the handout. I'm happy to do that. Uh, I have run out of time and do not have time to go through. I, I can stay on a couple of minutes and maybe answer some uh, as Dr. Wright uh, starts her lecture, I'll answer off to the side. But if you're in the WhatsApp group, um, feel free to send questions you may have, or you can email me uh, for any questions about what we discussed today or for a copy of the handout. So thanks for joining and listening in. And as always, I bid you good health and peace. Thank you so much, uh, Sister Nana Akua, for your wonderful lecture. Really appreciate you. Um, on next, we're going to have uh, the Pan-African History uh, class with Dr. Tarin Wright. Okay, I wasn't unmuted. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, and you'll see me momentarily. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Pan-African History and <laughs> Organizing class. I'm laughing because I know you guys hear my cat, uh, one of my cats, uh, carrying it on. So you'll see me momentarily. <laughs> and um, thank you, Nana Cool. I was actually following along and taking some of those notes, too, um, as well. Okay, so welcome, everyone. Hold on. Let me get my camera together. I'm actually going to be on my computer this time. Usually, I use my uh, I usually use my um, my device, a device or or something. But today, I'm going to be on the computer uh, for this session. So momentarily, you will see me. Okay. First off, let me say this. I have posted some. Um, materials in the group. One is a document for Nkrumah. The other is a document uh, for the um, pan, first pan, the Pan-African Congresses. Okay. And um, sorry, I'm trying to get into the uh, group here. <laughs> um, so the second is the Pan-African Congress's re resolutions, the first and the last, okay, which are the 1919 Conference Congress. It is a conference, but it's the continuous Congresses, right? Uh, and then the second uh, resolution on that same document is the 1945 Manchester Congress, okay? Both very important. Uh, the 1945 Congress, very significant because of the fact that it would be the um, event in which the uh, African Union I mean, the organization of African unities, leadership would assert itself, okay? And so leadership that would essentially be, at, be in position to demand that continental unity was in order. So, but I'm gonna get more clear on that. I just wanna, well, I'll let you guys see me on camera, but then I'm gonna switch to switch in to another way. Let me see how I can do this you guys can see me okay <laughs> so bear with me because i want to um actually get on my computer instead so that we can go through or maybe i might just do it here so i can uh, so there's no delay uh that being said let me share uh what i'm talking about uh with you all momentarily let's see we're gonna and we're going to go through some of these documents so that you can actually uh, follow along and read the actual Congress resolutions. And I want to get into the importance of, of that and what that means for us, for that time, all of that. So let me uh, share my, can I share my uh, camera or share my screen? Have permission, please. Yes, you are not. Thank you very much. So I'm going to
Alright. So I'm actually doing this on my device, guys. But um, the reason why I'm doing that is good because uh, so you see our course here. See, I just posted these um, documents in our course. So this is 18B, but it's there for uh, 18A as well. Okay. Uh, so if you are in the WhatsApp course, you can see. So the first one right here is in Kruma's document. I posted them in the opposite order than I intended to. Uh, so this is what you'll be reading this week, a need for union government for a, a need for a union government for Africa. <clears throat> and this is Kwame Nkrumah, Osajefo uh, Kwame Nkrumah, uh, who gave this speech at Cairo Summit Conference. And he gave the speech on behalf of the Organization of African Unity in, on July 19th. 1964 and actually isn't it so coincidental because it's almost what today's july 16th so three days from now however many years ago <laughs> right so uh you know almost what 60 40 almost uh 80 years ago now okay uh let's see am i wrong no 60 something years ago now okay so uh, we will look this over and look at what he proposes is the need for a union government, but this will be what you're reading. I'll only touch on a couple of things because this is uh, your work for the rest of the week to read this in its entirety so that we can discuss further. Um, and the second document is the pan, and this really should have been the first document, but I posted them in opposite order. Um, this is the Pan-African Congress resolution. Now, what's important about this? The Pan-African Congresses, if you remember or a couple of weeks ago when we read a chapter, one of the first readings we had in this course, uh, uh, a chapter called Booker T. Washington, Pan-Africanism and Pan-Africanist. Well, in there, we read about the first Pan-African conference that happened in 1900. This is the first time African people, Black people from around the world come together to strategize around our condition and exploitation in this world. And we do so for the first time under the term, newly coined term, Pan-Africanism, right? Pan-African. That was initiated by Henry Sylvester Williams on behalf of an organization called the African Association. This is the first time in recorded history that we knew of the term Pan-African to be used, very important. That conference was in essence a one-time conference. Uh, Booker T. Washington did not attend, Du Bois attended and many others attended. However, by 1919, the year here, all of the participants of the first Pan-African conference, and I'm gonna turn this sideways, hopefully this will make it better. Uh, all of the participants of the first Pan-African conference would be deceased, okay? And uh, Du Bois would be the sole survivor of this conference. Okay, that being said, he has the consciousness to initiate something called the Pan-African Congresses. Now in format, they are conferences, but they are continuous, which is why they're called Congresses, okay? The first of its kind, would be 1919. 
and like I said, W.E.B. Du Bois, William Edward Bookhart Du Bois, the historian and scholar, would be the first one to actually um, would be the first person to initiate this as he is the sole survivor of the original Pan-African Congress. Con conference, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so long story short, that happens. And there's an understanding that this body, the Congresses, would in essence be continuous and it would be a think tank through which African leadership would come together and strategize around the condition of African people in the world and particularly on the African continent which was at the time being occupied by many colonial forces, okay, or imperialist uh, nations. That being said, um, the organization of African unity would be an entity that is born out of the Congresses. This is very important to understand because this organizational body, would be responsible for what we know today, the African Union. So the original format and form uh, organizational uh, structure of the African Union was the organization of African unity, which is born out of these Congresses, these Pan-African Congresses initiated, or let me be very clear, one of the initiators being W.E.B. Du Bois from the United States. Very important to understand because Du Bois is a complex figure. Um, and with all his complexity, he still had some level of commitment to the liberation and total independence of the African continent. And that is important. That is important. The African continent would be the highest expression of Pan-Africanism because it would not just be organization, it would not just be individuals, it would not just be um, organizational, it would not just be one nation, but the expression of Pan-Africanism that many were pushing for, like Nkrumah, would be continental, okay? In other words, uh, some of you may be familiar with uh, Nkrumah in the sense that Nkrumah, the leader and president of a liberated and free Ghana, which was previously called the Gold Coast, on Independence Day asserts that Ghana's independence is nothing unless it leads to the total independence of the African continent. And ultimately he talks about a United States of Africa. Now, I'm not saying we need a United States of Africa, but we sure need a unified Africa. What would that mean? That would mean an Africa that benefits African people, Black African people, first and foremost, more than anyone else benefits from what the continent has and what the continent has to offer, right? That's not what we currently have. What we currently have is that uh, everybody else benefits from the resources, human and otherwise, of Africa. And the African person, the Black person, is the last to benefit from what Africa has to offer. So today's whole study is about these organized efforts, organizational bodies that try to advance the objective of Pan-Africanism, okay? 
And so with the Pan-African Congresses, you have the first of its kind in 1919, and then you have the second, uh, the final uh, Congress, which is the Manchester, or let me say this, not the final, but the most important historically Congress in 1945, the Manchester Congress. Why is the Manchester Congress is important? Is in, why is the Manchester Congress important? Because it did what I just stated. It would be that moment in history that all of the African heads of states and leadership at the time, or leadership, let's say leadership, because they're on the front end of taking their independence. And it is in this context that all of the African leadership in position at that time and in attendance of this Congress assert that it's not just simply about the liberation of individual African countries, it is about the total liberation of the African continent and the unification of those liberated uh, and independent states. Okay, so continental unification, something we don't have now, but I can attest to the fact that there are uh, some efforts of continental unity, right? The um, Pan-African free trade that we talked about last week, somebody mentioned it. Uh, that is somewhat an expression of it. Uh, the unification of currencies uh, regionally, albeit the unified passport, which will benefit African people uh, tremendously an ability to move freely around the continent of Africa uh, as you know, the rightful inhabitants of the African continent. Uh, so there are some symbol and some things that still exist that are, uh, you know, uh, ring of this uh, ultimate unification that some aspire. Now, out of these Congresses, this organization, right, that Nkrumah would speak to the or, or on behalf, right, on behalf of the organization of African unity. So out of the Pan-African Congresses, the organization of African unity emerges. Okay. This is important because of the simple fact that um, the organization of African unity will be that body, organizational body that represents our ideals and our dream of, I hate to use that term dream because it makes it sound like we can't make it come true, but um, our ideal of a unified Africa, okay? So the mission of the Organization of African Unity is to bring about continental unity. And another word for unity is Pan-Africanism, if you are an African or Black person, <laughs> okay? Um, that's what unity is. And, and unity that takes into account that our unity is for the purpose of addressing our condition of being exploited and oppressed in the world. Right, not unity for the sake of uh, all voting for uh, Obama, <laughs> not unity for the purpose of all spending our money with whatever exploitative entity, not unity for the purpose of, uh, I don't know what's going on these days, but whatever it is, not unity that is not, that doesn't serve our interests, unity for the purpose of eradicating oppression and exploitation. That's always the obje objective 
of Pan-Africanism. When that is not the objective, then that means it is not Pan-Africanist. Right? A lot of people have some confusion with this because I hear it all the time, particularly out here in the diaspora uh, in the United States, like, oh, oh Pan-Africanism hasn't done anything for us. Well, if it hasn't done anything for you, then that means it's not Pan-Africanist because the objective of Pan-Africanism is for it to do something substantial in light of our condition of being exploited, exploited or oppressed and oppressed, okay? By white supremacy and culture. Let me not let the, uh, the, the villain or the, the, the adversary go unnamed, right? We are struggling against white supremacy and culture that it has uh, manifested itself worldwide by uh, European imperialists or colonial nations and their agents. So, uh, so just to be clear, <laughs> all right? So this organization that you see Nkrumah speaking uh, on behalf of is the product of the Congresses that we just talked about in the previous document represents the first and the fifth Congresses, which are the notable Congresses, right? And so out of those, that think tank, out of those meetings comes this organization of African unity and that Nkrumah um, is the leader of. Present day, the organization manifests itself as the African Union. But today, so I want you all to read this so you can get some understanding of the organizational history. And I'm going to stop the, I'm going to stop the share. The problem today, today we do have a representation of this organization, right? And today, the present day um, organization is called the Pan-African you, I mean, the African Union. And this is a problem because this, this brings us to our current and present situation. And our current and present situation is the fact that the African Union today, although it exists, unfortunately, is funded by the European Union. 60% of the monies uh, that supports the African Union come from the European Union, the EU. This is very problematic. How can an entity, and it's a very sad thing, if, if any of you know, I'm gonna actually post a video, a um, uh, historical video that talks about the independence struggles and talks about African leadership at this period in time. But for those of you who know who Nkrumah was and to, to Ghana and to African people and to the African world for an organization like the Organization of African Unity, which he is key in initiating. And it's always with the mission to bring about continental unity. If you know what it meant to African people to see this organizational expression of our values, to now be the African Union, where heads of states are represented there, are, are represent their countries in there, and for them to allow the EU to be the largest funder of an organization that's born out of our highest desires for continental unity. So in essence, the EU controls the African Union. And if any of you stay abreast of this kind of stuff, you know that in Addis, right? Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, the headquarters of the African Union, you know that the Chinese have built the African Union headquarters. And although they might want to say, oh, this is a gift to Africa and African people, we know that no, there's all these strings attached unfortunately. And so um, the point is, is that we are still in this struggle for a organizational body that was the expression of our Pan-African ideals to truly 
serve that mission continentally, right? We are still in the process of trying to have the highest expression. Now, that's not to ignore the fact that during this very period that I'm talking about, the 60s, from 1962 to 1963, 17 African nations will take their independence from colonial and imperialist European nations. That is an epic thing. That's a big deal, okay? It has never happened in the world before. 17 countries take their independence in two years time, all fighting uh, to be independent and free from oppression, okay? So, um, and then, you know, many others would come after in the, in the um, West, I mean, West Africa, typically the transfer or the, the uh, independent struggle was not violent, not to say that there weren't outbursts of violence, because even in, in Ghana's case, there were situations, um, but there was not a long uh, protracted armed struggle. But East and Southern Africa are different. Holders of a large portion of the world's resources, okay, particularly those on the east of um, east of the Congo. Um, so these countries have to what fight armed struggles, right? Kenya, Zimbabwe, right, on and on. Mozambique. Yeah, so. There are armed struggles that have to take place because Europeans have settled in these countries and <laughs> refused to leave. Uh, and yes, any nationalist struggle is certainly a struggle over the land, not for anything else. It's a struggle over the nation itself. So that being said, uh, you know, you have a continental struggle for independence from imperialism and colonialism. And it is a notable one because in a very short amount of time, majority of the African continent is liberated from colonialism uh, and colonial rule. However, then we face our new challenge, the neo-colonial paradigm, right? where we have leadership that looks like us, but no longer serves our interests, right? A white agenda in blackface, right? And, uh, I, you know, I, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop here and of course direct you to the documents, but I'm gonna just give you some real life conversation to support this. Interestingly enough, recently I was having a conversation with someone and someone said, oh, the African continent, oh, the, um, there's so much corruption. Let's be very clear about something. Prior to the colonial paradigm, there is no corruption to have because these systems don't exist, right? Europeans come and impose these systems, rip us out of our traditional ways of life, even uh, in our our big centers, uh, meaning that we are trading, we are selling, we are producing, we have markets, all of that prior to colonial uh, invasion, okay? But corruption, this is the definition of corruption. The definition of corruption is your African head of state being in bed with the Europeans, European nations, and allowing the European nations to rob your African nation. So it's always laughable when people from the West, European nations in particular, talk about the corruption in Africa. The very nature and definition of African corruption is the African, the Black African leader being in bed with Europe and robbing and raping the country of its resources so that Europeans get it at a cheap and discounted price and they make all the money, right? Whether it's diamonds or even taking cobalt or coltan out of the Congo or whatever it is, and the people get nothing for coming from a resource wealthy country. That's what corruption is. <laughs> 
corruption is, is where your African leader uh, is in bed with the European colonial nations. So it's always funny to hear Westerners, particularly the Europeans, talk about African corruption. Okay, when they are the other half of the corrupt body that is in collusion with it. So th this corruption in Africa is not possible without the European nation on the other side, uh, you know, doing its bidding with our leadership that should be representing us, but is in bed with them. I always think there's such great hypocrisy in that critique and that criticism of African corruption. And I'm not saying that things aren't are working perfectly in Africa. That's not the point. No, they're not. But that brings us to the news phase of our struggle, where it is a little more sophisticated. The people look like us, but don't advance our interests. And that's why this curriculum here, in the context of this course, one of the objectives of the course is to be able to teach you to qualify, qualify, qualify everything to see whether or not it is truly to our benefit, right? You want to qualify things before you assume it's beneficial to you, right? So that's one of the things we do. So the person can look like us, that's great. They can have African leadership that looks like us, but do they serve our interests, right? We want to look at the policies they make. What are the practices they are engaged in? Does that really serve our interests? Is this good and beneficial to African people in a material way? When we know our material condition is uh, a very large part of our struggle, right? Because we have been robbed in every way, everywhere we are. So I'm gonna leave you with that. I'm gonna look at a couple of questions. I'm gonna be posting a video later um, yes, exactly. Corruption is baked into the colonial structure, right? After really need to wake up, how can we, from an alliance trying to get away from the European supremacy and then still need them to, right, exactly. So I'm glad you guys get the point, Patrick. Um, it really doesn't make sense. Yes, I, I agree with that. And people, there are people behind the scenes who are still struggling and fighting this fight. But the attitudes are such that, you know, to almost openly say that if you are part of these entities uh, is to, you know, lose your job or to, you know, you know, suffer in some way. So it's like people like me who are free enough to say this, that can say it to the masses of you, that you should know that the European Union is the largest contributor to the African Union, something like 60%. So now they're controlling an organization that's born out of our greatest pan-Africanist aspirations. It's really very sad. Um, thank you, Natalia Faith. Um, Aubrey, uh, Aubrey, um, write the administrators. I love black people and um, ask to join if you're not already in there because the documents are in the group, right? So I actually posted them before uh, this session so that you'll have them going in. And so you see where they are. Sometimes I do that because I, you know, I, sometimes that works even better than having the session and then, you know, whatever, showing you the documents. So you're going into this week with the documents already. You'll have read both of those. And I'll be posting another video um, that gives you the history because it is important for you to understand the history of this period. This is sort of what we ground ourselves in, the historical facts we get to ground ourselves in, in terms of um, the activity and the um, role we play in an organization like this. Why are we doing what we're doing? right? Why do we come together, right? Well, we come together always to deal with our condition, okay? All right, I know I see some people, their, their time is, you know, running out in terms of being online, and so I want to thank you all for uh, being here today, committing your time to this process.
and to learning. Please enjoy the uh, two documents that are there. The, those are historic documents. Please keep them because these are not documents uh, that you will find every day just off the rip, okay? So they actually sometimes cost some money to you know, actually acquire or produce. So keep them so that by the end of this course, you will have a body of information uh, for your arsenal so that you can go back and you know, re-examine some of the materials uh, that help develop us ideologically around moving as Pan-Africanists in this organization. Okay, so thank you everyone. I appreciate you all. I am because we are and um, stay safe. Thank you so much for a wonderful lecture. I am because we are we really do appreciate each and every one uh, who stayed on to the end of the lecture. We really appreciate you guys. I can see Solomon Ibe, uh Bray. We appreciate you, John Jones and Jerome Palm, Larry. Thank you so much. Christine Bailey, Anna, DJ. We are greatly appreciated, guys. Philip Michelia. Edwin Ngwambi, I can't mention all of you, but thank you, Morgan Moss, uh, just joining, but uh, the call has just ended. Anna, thank you. Jennifer Tao, appreciate you guys. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Henda, Joseph, Isanmia, uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. I am because we are. We love you all. Uh, stay safe. Thank you. Love and peace. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.